Ich glaube, dein Jörgi, nice to meet you, and you're the man of facts and figures and the man with the insider knowledge. And thanks for opening up doors and sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you. Workers told me that they get 700 lever, means 350 euro. This is quite above the minimum wage level, isn't it? Yes, they get a little bit over the minimum wage, but the, actually the, the figures are close to minimum wage or sometimes it could go even lower. 350 euro as in net terms, yes, some workers get this, but in practice this figure includes all kinds of bonuses that can be taken arbitrarily away from workers. Uh, like for example, there is attendance bonuses, There are bonuses for uh, overtime because they have to, in this factory, they have to work at least two Saturdays per month overtime. Uh, there is also bonus for nighttime labor and, and other uh, bonuses. And sometimes the basic wage can go up to uh, 200 or less, which is basically the minimum wage or below. Sometimes it can go below minimum wage. And a, a real scandal is also that even when workers get the minimum wage, the minimum wage is already a scandal because it's much more be below any kind of estimations of living wages that workers have to have uh, to have a decent life. What exactly is the meaning of the living wage? Living wage is a kind of a family concept. The, the living wage should be able to sustain a whole family, let's say of, of four members, a household of four members. And it would include costs for uh, clothing, costs for renting, costs for uh, food, costs for um, cultural expenses, costs for education for the children, and all kinds of basic things. It's not about like having a, a fancy lifestyle, it's, it's a basic uh, uh, lifestyle. Regarding those figures, is this matching with a living wage? There is a big gap. Uh, it, it really depends on the factory. In some cases, the actual net wages uh, go as low as 10% of the living wage. But the average, according to our studies, for, for all the uh, country, for last year it was about 15 to 17 percent of living wage costs. Well, global competition is quite tough. So companies, they say the workers should be more productive to get a higher salary. They cannot afford to pay poverty wages anymore because we can see this as from the fact that workers are massively moving to live towards Western Europe. Pirintex, for example, the factory that you did research in, they used to have about 3,000 workers, now they have less than 2,000, and the most um, radical drop in the num number of workers happened in the last year, year and a half, when uh, the management decided to one-sidedly end the collective agreement that they used to have the workers, and they uh, started to be more kind of much more aggressive with the workers and to try to push wages down. So they uh, will not have workers in the end. And you, as you saw, there are no young workers. There are um, always, uh, workers are always trying to think of ways to migrate to Western Europe. So this is a dead end if they continue to pay uh, poverty wages. And it's not the fault of workers that uh, uh, Bulgarian uh, businesses in the sector cannot organize and to ask for a better deal from global brands as well. So it's not the fault of the workers. And there is also one more thing is that we have to look into, into the whole value chain because it's of course not the responsibility only of Bulgarian entrepreneurs but they are uh, in fact they are uh, part of a bigger companies because if a, if a company uh, works only for one big brand in, in practice the brand is the uh, is the principal employer it is not the local subcontractor please compare the situation in Bulgaria to the situation abroad in 2004 for example more than 10 years ago there were Uh, about 170,000 workers in the sector. Now it's less than 8,000. So it's a dramatic drop in the num number of workers. And they constantly complain, like uh, business associations, they constantly complain that they cannot find enough workers. Working conditions in Bulgaria are sometimes worse than the working conditions in uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, this is because here nominally wages are higher, but uh, they are lower in terms of how wages measure to living wages. Because in Bulgaria we have Uh, Bulgarian wages, but European prices. You did some in-depth research across the country. You got insider knowledge about the working conditions. What is going wrong? The worst problems are uh, related to um, wage levels and also excessive overtime. But there are also many other issues, like for example closures, because sometimes um, uh, small uh, subcontractors, they are dependent only on one brand. And when the brand cancels order in the last moment, what happens is that the uh, supplier has to close down. And sometimes in these cases, workers don't get paid for months and months and months. 
Another problem is related to uh, uh, management by stress. Like management sometimes is extremely aggressive, insulting workers, not allowing them to take sick leaves uh, and uh, taking away all these bonuses that I mentioned uh, arbitrarily if workers express any dissent. Regarding the issue over time, what are the facts and figures you have? Uh, sometimes in small, smaller factories in rural regions, there are cases of extreme overtime. Extreme overtime is like 12 hours per day. And we have had interviews that there were cases of reported faintings because of overwork. And even one extreme example, if you want, is that uh, uh, um, a woman, because she had a health problem and she had hidden it from the management, uh, so she fainted during uh, this kind of excessive overtime. And then she was immediately fired because she was employed without any contract, but she was just paid uh, on, by hand on a daily basis, which is completely illegal. So the management got afraid that they're going to get caught by the labor inspection. So they kind of fired her because she fainted from overwork without paying her for this day. I got some information regarding some shocking experience you had doing this research work. Tell us about it. Sometimes uh, employers employ officially the workers only for a four-hour working day, but they pay the rest of the money uh, in an envelope, we say in Bulgarian. Uh, so in this way, workers are not paying kind of social security payments, so they kind of steal away from their future, basically. In all Eastern Europe, I would say the situation is very similar, but not only uh, in Eastern Europe that are in countries that are member of the EU, such as Romania, but also in uh, other countries like Serbia, Albania, Macedonia, it's very similar working conditions in the sector. Straightforward, what should be changed? Sometimes uh, the government has the power to intervene, not directly, but let's say through the tax policy that they do. And for instance, Bulgaria is the only country in Europe that does not have any deduction on minimum income. If the deduction of, if tax deduction is introduced on minimum income, this would significantly increase or at least substantially increase the situation of uh, workers. But there are other things like, for example, unions have been calling for um, collective agreements on a sectoral level uh, and there is some desire on the side of business as well to do this kind of collective agreement, but there should be kind of an active intervention of the government to kind of to bridge these uh, uh, negotiations, to bridge this uh, dialogue. European elections are upcoming, so what should be done that the situation is going to change? Uh, up until now, unfortunately, the European Union has been more of a financial and economic union than social union, even though there are progressive steps, of course, like the European pillar of social rights, but unfortunately, uh, there are no mechanisms to, to enforce uh, uh, social rights in, in Europe. And uh, there should be more thinking in this direction, for sure, because what happens now is that Eastern Europe countries like Bulgaria, what they do, uh, they kind of do like social dumping and um, they uh, try to uh, gain competitiveness by cutting wages, cutting labor rights and so on. But this in the end affects all Europe. It affects it f uh, also to, through the fact that many Bulgarians are forced to seek jobs uh, in Western Europe. Only in 2017, maybe about 50,000 Bulgarians had to look for jobs in Germany. So this is not a sustainable situation. And there should be more mechanisms to enforce and to stop this social dumping done by Eastern Europe.